my name is Mia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And today, I'm going to rank every book that I've read this year thus far. Firstly, before I get into more of the video, I just want to say I apologize that it's been a minute since I've posted. I've been really busy. And not to brag a little bit, but I got my dream internship working for Detour Studios here in Austin, Texas which is Richard Linkletter's studio. Richard Linkletter of Days and Confused and School of Rock and the Before Trilogy. I hope you can forgive me for being away for a little bit, but I intend to make more videos because I really love posting on this channel. As we've established, I am a huge bookworm and I love talking about what I'm reading at the moment. I talked about my reading goals in the very first video that I ever did on this channel, so I feel like it's only proper if we do a mid-year check-in. I also wanted to add before I got into this video too much that I am, I get a lot of inspiration from Jack Edwards here on YouTube. He is amazing and I love his channel and I saw him do a video kind of similar to this one and I thought, hey, free video idea. I'm joking, that is not what I thought at all. I just love him so much and I love his content, so if you aren't subscribed to him, please go subscribe to him because he's awesome. My goal this year was to read 24 books in total, which put me at two books per month. Right now, I have read 14 books and I am ahead of my goal by three books, so yay. I owe a big part of that to the last video that I did. If you haven't seen that, please go watch it. But I think that helped me out a lot, the fact that I read two books in one freaking week. Like I've said before on this channel, I use Storygraph to track my reading. And one of the reasons that I really like Storygraph is because it gives you a lot of these interesting statistics, not just about the books or the pages that you read, but about genres that you like, about moods, about how much you read per month. And so I wanted to read my mid-year stats with you guys. My moods so far this year are mainly emotional, dark and adventurous. A majority of the books I read were between 300 and 500 pages. 57% of my reading is fiction with 43% being nonfiction. And my biggest genre is fantasy, which I'm very shocked by. I love having these stats. I just think it's so interesting. I love seeing the genres that I read and the moods. So I really enjoy that. This isn't an ad at all. I just really like story graphs. So Storygraph sponsor me, please. <laughs> I also wanted to add before I get into my rankings that I haven't actually read anything this year that I really disliked. I've actually really enjoyed all of the books that I've read. It's more of just my personal taste. But anyways, let's get into my rankings. Yeah. So I read three Amanda Lovelace poetry books. I read To Make Monsters Out of Girls, The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one, and The Mermaid's Voice Returns in this one. And although this is coming in last, I want to say that I, I did enjoy it. I'm just not the biggest fan of poetry. It's just really not my style. I had my beautiful friend Abby give me these books, which I'm so grateful for, and I'm really happy she recommended them because I do like getting out of my comfort zone every once in a while. I love the way that Lovelace talks about feminism and the patriarchy, and I'm always down for that. So I did enjoy reading through these books, and I think they hold a lot of emotion. So it's very interesting. I gave each of these three stars, but yeah, poetry just isn't my jam, guys. Yeah. This was also given to me by my same gorgeous friend. And in this memoir, Parker talks about her journey with endometriosis, getting diagnosed, dealing with her diagnosis, talking about it, talking to her work, to her family about it. It's a really up close and personal look at a disease that before this book, to be honest, I didn't really know too much about. It definitely widened my worldview just a bit more and it taught me how to empathize with people more, which I'm really grateful for. My only critique is that I think the book could have been shorter. I did feel like towards the end that the author was kind of repeating herself a bit, but overall, I really enjoyed this read. I gave it three stars. Yeah. I talked about this book in my last video, so I will not bore y'all with another review. But yes, I really did like this book. I think it talks about mental illness in a very real and personable way. And I think it handled tough topics very, very well. It's a lot to read, so trigger warning if you don't know already. If you decide to pick it up, just be careful. I gave this three and a half stars. Yeah. So this is my latest read. 
In case you don't know, this book is by the director of Sin City, Desperado, Spy Kids, Shark Boy and Lava Girl, El Mariachi, and much more. He's originally from Texas, and in this book, he chronicles about how he made his first feature film for only $7,000 which in case you don't know, that is basically nothing. And his film ended up getting the attention of studios like Disney and Columbia and ended up getting him a foot in the door in Hollywood. As you guys know, because I just announced my new job, I'm a filmmaker myself, so I wanted to read this book to get some information as well as inspiration. And this book is great for that. It's very personable, very funny. He writes it in diary entries, so you get a really like day by day, play by play, of how he did what he did, which I do think is super, super insightful. Towards the end, it also feels like the book drags. It, it feels like he does repeat himself, and at one point you're like, okay, I get it. If you are curious about how movies are made at all, I would totally pick it up because it's a really short and easy and informative read. I gave it three and a half stars. Yeah. I've also talked about this book in my last video, why haven't you watched it yet? Go watch it! But if you're looking for a summer read or a vacation read, this is a really fun whodunit and I can't recommend it enough. I kind of changed my rating on this one. I'm giving it four stars. Yeah. Okay, guys, I have never been more surprised by a book in my life. I would heard about this series before on social media and TikTok but I never really picked it up because I always thought it was like a YA type thing. Like I kind of thought it was like a shadow and bone type deal. And not that that's a bad thing, but it's just not really my jam. And then one of my cousins ended up telling me, dude, I love this book series. It's amazing. And then another one of my cousins was like, yeah, I've read it too. It's amazing. And so I was like, okay, well, I trust their taste and, and they don't like bad stuff. So I guess I'm going to try it out. And even when I was reading it, I wasn't sure if I liked it. Because, like, what's this furry propaganda? Like what, like, what is this, guys? But the further that I read, the more that I saw dark fantasy and romance and thriller and even a little bit of horror in there, which are all things that I really, really love. It's the perfect amount of romance, and it just felt like, it just feels like an adult fairy tale, which I really, really love. It's one of my favorite things. I think my reaction after reading a book or watching a film or anything like that can be more telling than while I'm watching or reading. Impressions are really important. If you forget about a book right after you read it, it probably wasn't that good to begin with. And I can say after I finished this first book, I was foaming at the mouth to get the next one. I was so excited. I'm reading it right now and I just I'm dying to know what happens next I really am like invested in this story and invested in Thera I gave this book four stars yeah I think I mentioned on here at the beginning of the year that I started out the year by reading all of the Lord of the Rings books so all of those including The Hobbit will be included on here and as you can guess they are in the higher end of my ratings but and this also may be con a controversial ranking, but this is my ranking of the Lord of the Rings books. And the Fellowship of the Ring is going here. And it's primarily because of Tom Bombadil. I don't like Tom Bombadil. Just, just, just being honest. <laughs> it just, that part of the novel dragged for me. I felt like they were on this threshold where they're like about to leave the Shire and about to go into this adventure. And I felt like we were getting there. And then you just get to Tom Bombadil. And to me, it just felt like, what are we doing? Like, why are we wasting like 75, 100 pages on this? Why? I just didn't get it. It was not my favorite. But obviously this novel is still one of the best fantasy reads of all time. Being introduced to everybody, having the fellowship made, it's just, ugh. I love the beginning of this book whenever they start out in the Shire and the birthday party. Shout out to the Shire. That's like my real homeland. That's actually where I'm from. Those are my people. So love them. But in my personal ranking, this is overall just where the Fellowship of the Ring fell for me. I gave it four stars, probably more like 4.5 because I'm not going to sit here and say it's as good as A Court of Roses and Thorns. Sorry, Sarah J. Mass. Yeah. Like I said earlier, my rankings might be controversial. 
And the Two Towers is here because of the Ents, and probably the Ents alone. I love the Ents very much. <laughs> I know that storyline isn't really overall important to the plot, but I just, I just love that. I think they're such interesting creatures. I think they're probably the most interesting creatures in all of Middle Earth. What I liked about this book is I did kind of like how it was separated by the characters. In a way, I did find that really interesting. And honestly, it almost helps you keep track of everything better because they're all sectioned off together. So I gave this a 4.5. Yeah. So I know many people had to read this in school. However, I recently read this for the very first time. I was going through books in my house trying to find something to read and I ended up going through a box of books that my brother had for high school and I found this very short memoir. In case you don't know, this memoir is a young man's account from Auschwitz that which he survived. It's a super short read and it could not be more powerful. I'm not really going to say too much about it because you have to read it for yourself. It's required reading for everybody. I gave it five stars. What else would I have given it? Are you joking? Yeah. Now, you know Neil Gaiman. You just don't know that you know Neil Gaiman. You know, <laughs> Neil Gaiman wrote Quarantine. And once I heard that, I was totally sold. I picked up this book on a whim. I was just in the bookstore and I didn't know what I wanted to read next. I ended up finding this whole section with his books. I saw that he wrote Coraline and then I was like, cool, I'm gonna read this. This is a sci-fi, fantasy, creepy, eerie, fun book full of short stories. They range from somebody found the cure for cancer and here's what happened to an old woman bargains with a knight for the Holy Grail. He really combines these interesting plot lines and situations with the style of dialogue that really lets you get under a character's skin. You really know what they're thinking and their true motivation for doing everything. And I, I really love that combination. I think he's amazingly creative and I'm, I'm really excited to read more of his books. I thought about this book a lot after I read it and I think that really tells you something. I gave this book 4.5 stars. Yeah. You knew this had to be in the top two. What can I say about this book that hasn't already be, been said? Any fan of fantasy has to read this novel. In fact, probably everyone should just read this novel. It's adventurous and fun and it's just, it is, it just transport you. It's such a classic. I gave it five stars. Yeah. And our number one, of course, is The Return of the King, the very last Lord of the Rings book. Once again, you saw this coming. It's a grand ending to a grand series. The writing of the battle scenes in this novel is so intense and climactic. It makes you feel exactly like you want to feel. Almost like you're watching a movie, but within the book. Both Merry and Pippin's story arcs are the best thing ever. They make me so happy. And oh my god, the scene with Eowyn! It's so good. I'm geeking out right now. I can't even help but talk about this and just geek out because I love it so much. And the ending of this book had me sobbing like a child. The last hundred pages of this book, I was just crying because it's you get so attached to these characters. You're so attached to Frodo and Sam. And so when Frodo... Does it start crying right now? No, I'm not gonna do it. There are just no slow parts in this novel and it's absolute peak fantasy, five stars, no questions. And that's the end of this video, guys. Whenever I finish the court series, I think I'd really like to do a video on that. That obviously won't be for a while, but I definitely have a lot that I want to talk about this book. And I will definitely do an end of year roundup in December for sure. And I know I've been sitting on it here for a while, but I would love to do a vlog. So I'm going to try and do... Y'all let me know if you'd even watch a vlog, okay? Just let me know thoughts, if you like the reading videos, if you would like to see movie reviews, if you would like to see vlogs, just whatever you guys would like to see, please let me know in the comments because I am always looking for new video ideas every day. Go follow me on all my socials, they are all down below. Go find me on Storygraph, Instagram, Letterboxd, The Works. I'm at 59 subscribers and I'm so happy guys. We are halfway to 100. I feel so, so honored. 
Whenever we get to 100, I promise I'm going to do a big celebration. I'm really excited. I'm so happy you are here on this earth. Please go spread some kindness. I love ya. Bye. Yeah.